Uh, I, I just want to kick things off and then I am going to get out of the way because the three of you are far smarter at Lightroom. When it comes to developing, I've got it down. When it comes to actually getting organized, I'm going to admit the whole purpose of today's show is slightly selfish maybe. Um, <laughs> I get the ability to listen to three Lightroom experts tell me how I've done everything wrong. My New Year's resolution <laughs> is to get my library more organized and to be able to find my stuff. Uh, I've been putting all sorts of things in there. I've started using Lightroom to organize a lot of my, my DSLR video clips, my time-lapse shoots, as well as all of my normal photography. And so I have just ballooned my library, to say the least. And uh, I want to know all the great ways that we can go about getting things organized. So we put together an agenda for today. Uh, I'm just going to go through that really quick to sort of cue things up. So in no particular order, we're going to talk about collections and smart collections, so keeping things organized. Talk about some strategies for when it comes time to import, as well as the idea of using folders and moving those folders. Uh, one of the things, Rob, that you threw out that I love is the update folder command to sort of force things to say, hey, I probably did things in the wrong order. I made some changes at the desktop level, or I just tossed something in here. Go look for it. We're going to talk about reconnecting things when they go offline, and uh, as well as how to publish things when you think you've got them right. And uh, of course, we'll talk about some backup strategies, the idea that your photos aren't really safe unless they exist in at least two locations with three copies. And uh, I'm in the process of being paranoid right now. I think I'm working on copy number five. I've got two cloud backups going right now. So, uh, but I don't think that's bad. So with that, why don't we do a quick round of introductions. Uh, why don't we start with, with you, Rob. Can you just give folks a little bit about your background and, and tell them your experience with Lightroom? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I have been doing uh, Lightroom help desk support for NAP, uh, now Kelby 1, uh, since Lightroom 1 came out. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's It's been a great learning opportunity for me because uh, one of the best ways to learn is by actually helping people solve problems, and I've gotten to work with a lot of different photographers who have very different workflows than my own, which has exposed me to a lot of different ways of, of using Lightroom. One of the things I found from that is that there's no one right way. So what I try to help people is just understand the basics of how to use Lightroom so that people can adapt it to their own workflow. Excellent. And uh, Levi, why don't you tell folks a little bit about you? Although I'm saying without the hat and with the headset, you look like you're ready to take my time life order. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll go step down and grab a hat real quick here. Uh, you go well, I'm, <laughs> I'm a photographer, and this is what I do for a living. And, uh, and I also teach. I've been teaching Lightroom since uh, 2009 in, in Lightroom 2. And I just am floored with how wonderful a program it is. I use it for 98.2% of all my editing as well as all of my organization. If, if you want to see a picture on my computer, I open Lightroom. That's, that's the whole. In fact, I don't know what else I do on a computer. <laughs> like, like, yes. If, if Adobe well, would make like the, like the Google Chromebook except for like Lightroom. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, Levi, you bring up a good point, which is that for many photographers working professionally or enthusiastically, I, I think that's the two ways of describing it, you're either uh, cyclically <laughs> devoted and not getting paid or cyclically <laughs> devoted and figured out how to get people to pay you for it. But in either way, right. Lightroom is a, a great tool that allows you to not just develop your pictures, but keep them organized. Gerard, you have uh, some strong opinions on this, but why don't you just quickly introduce yourself as well, and then we'll, we'll jump into the first topic. Well, I have, I have strong opinions on lots of things, Rich, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a topic for another day. Uh, I'm Gerard Murphy. I'm CEO co-founder of Mosaic. I have a sort of a different approach to Lightroom uh, in that I get to make a living on it in, in two ways. I'm a photographer, and I've been so since I was a kid, since I can remember always taking photos. Um, but I started uh, Mosaic with my best friend a couple of years back, and now we host about 45 million uh, Lightroom photos for our customers around the world. Um, for those of you who don't know 
what Mosaic is. Uh, we're one of the sponsors of this of this series uh, here, and we have really uh, two interconnected products. One is a mobile app that you can get for free. So right after this hangout, go to the iTunes Store and download Mosaic, and allow you to see all your Lightroom photos on on the go and have them all in your pocket, which is really fun. And we also have a backup product uh, for uh, Lightroom users, where Lightroom users can back up their entire Lightroom catalog or selectively back up their Lightroom photos by stars, by flags, uh, or by collection. So some of the organizational techniques we have there. And the idea behind that is that you might have five terabytes worth of photos like Rich, um, but might only want a 400 gigabyte plan, or, or might only really want to get your best stuff off site. Um, and so we, we allow that to happen in a very automated way. Um, so I, I have the, uh, the distinct pleasure of getting to teach Lightroom, get to work with Lightroom every day, and get to help our customers uh, deal with all these Lightroom issues that, that they come across, which is great. Uh, now, I'm just going to say for the record, I've only figured out how to get people to pay me for my pictures and to teach them for my pictures. You've gone to a new level, <laughs> and you've worked photography into four areas of your life. So, uh, I, I, I don't have a bad job. I really don't. Like Every day I wake up saying, God, I am a lucky, lucky man uh, that I get to do this for a life, for a living, which is great. Excellent. Well, we've got a great show for you guys today. We are talking all about getting organized, and why don't we kick it right off. Uh, Rob, I'm going to start with you. Let's just, you drive and talk about the concept of collections versus smart collections, how we keep everything organized. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just to talk about it in a general sense, so <clears throat> Lightroom's uh, kind of core under the hood piece of software that Obviously, it usually confuses a lot of people, but it's this database concept. It's this catalog file. And within that catalog file, uh, the more data you add to it, the more you can leverage that database to work for you. And so um, one of the, two of the tools that Lightroom has uh, inside the catalog is uh, the concept of collections, and then there's smart collections. So to differentiate between the two, a smart collection is really like a saved search. All right, so you come up with a set of parameters. Uh, might be the capture date, might be aperture values, it might be any anything you can think of within the parameters that Lightroom supports, um, and you can configure this save search so that files automatically appear inside of a smart collection. And I'll switch over in a minute. I'll show you one that I use. Um, and then there's the other type of collection, which is more like a regular collection. Some people call it a dump collection, but really it's just a regular collection where you can kind of manually drag and drop photos into this grouping. And the beauty of a collection is that you can have a single photo in as many collections as you want. And Lightroom is using that catalog file to reference the location of those files. So think of it like a playlist in iTunes. You can have your favorite song. I'll show you. You can have your favorite song on about five different playlists, but that song is not being duplicated on your hard drive. It's just being referenced each time to play in that in that list. So um, you could have a series of regular collections and uh, smart collections, and those are organized within the collections panel by something called the collection set. And so a collection set holds different types of collections, while collections themselves hold the actual photos and, and videos as well. So now, we, we had a quick question from some folks sort of related to collections. Uh, one of our folks was asking, Troy said, you know, I've got a bunch of pictures, and I'm not sure if I'm going to actually edit them in Lightroom, should I still import them? Collections are not just the pictures you've edited, right? These are any pictures you want to keep organized for a client or a job. Rob, do you, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming not every picture in your collection is edited, right? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I use Lightroom, uh, Levi and I were talking about this earlier, is if I want to access a photo on my hard drive, uh, I open Lightroom. And that's the, that's the gateway to all of my photos and all of my video files. Um, because that way I can use Lightroom's uh, tool set to organize them and access them. And yeah, sure, many of them don't need to be edited at all. Um, and then what I may find is that down the road I may actually have the time or need to go back and edit some old file, and I can find it uh, that way. So. Yeah, Rob, I, I think that your analogy to um, to iTunes is actually really good, and it's one I've used in the past, too. Um, it, it's The catalog acts like the iTunes library, where once you put a photo into Lightroom, um, just like when you put music into iTunes, you sort of forget that there's a file under there. 
um, and you start to use the catalog to manage all of your photos. Um, so I, my photography starts and ends pretty much with Lightroom, where I will put in my SD card and immediately import it into Lightroom. Um, and I will then keep it there. Uh, if I do edit it, which I don't edit all my photos either, um, I will uh, I will I will be able to move it around on my hard drives within Lightroom. Uh, the catalog works really really well when you do things within Lightroom. Um, where where Lightroom seems to break down for folks is if you try to do a half like a, a hybrid approach where you say I'm going to do some things in Lightroom, some things out. Um, usually, if you buy all the way into Lightroom, it works really really well for you. So, Troy, I would say yes. Import all your stuff into Lightroom, um, and uh, you'll be you'll be happy for it. How about you, Levi? What's your approach here for collections and smart collections? Do you have smart collections that you know? My understanding is we can actually say, "Show me all of my edited images or unedited images." And what are some smart collections that you use just to quickly find your favorite stuff? Um, well, smart collections kind of uh, automatically disqualifies me from using them. <laughs> the, uh, I, I, I honestly, I don't use them much, and that's that's one of my resolutions this year is to begin using them more because it's so easy to use it to. So w what it can do is automatically search your entire catalog for stuff with with keywords or with flags or with stars and gather them all together into a spot, and. Uh, that kind of requires that you use keywords and stars and flags and things as well, and so that's that's also something I'm I'm working on more uh, lately is is using keywords so that I can quickly grab stuff. Um, but I do use collections all the time, and I use collections to quickly show off my favorite landscape pictures, and and so I can have a a, a parent folder of landscapes, and then within there. I could have um, waterfalls and sunsets and red rocks and mountains. And um, when I, when somebody says, "Hey, do you have any pictures of um, Multnomah Falls?" I can quickly click on my waterfalls thing there and find a, a good one that I liked and I had put in the collection. But then if they say, "Well, that's a good one. Do you have any more?" I can just right-click on that image and say, "Go to file in library, go to folder in library," and it takes me to the to the folder where that um, where that picture physically resides on the hard drive and shows me all the other pictures nearby it too. And that's really helpful. And then I also use it for my clients. Um, I, I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll photograph the Anderson family and when they come over to look at their pictures, I don't want to show them everything and then you know, they don't need to see everything I shot. They just need to see the good ones. So I've already taken the good ones and dropped them into a collection set for the Anderson family and, um, I just click on that and it shows me all the good ones right there. And a great thing about collections too is that it resets the sorting that you've used. It, it resets flags if you use flags and um, and so you can reapply those things in the collection and that helps me to sort with my clients to, to find the pictures that they um, that they're after. I mean I think for, for smart collections it works really really well if you are good about other metadata. Um, it starts. It sort of starts and ends with that. So you know, as Rob said, a smart collection is a saved search. Um, so if we think about that for a second, if you are able to search on things really easily, smart collections are for you. So if you import using keywords or you're really good at keywords and you want to save that search for my keywords for a client name or my keywords for wedding or my client my my keywords for my business name or whatever you want to use for keywords, architecture, land. Oops. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> looks like uh, looks like the Boston code got Boston cold got Gerard. So I'm sure he'll be back in a second, folks. Uh, to that end, you know, he is bringing up a very valid point, though, which is that if you don't take the time to organize with keywords up front, smart searches maybe aren't as useful. But Rob, you you work with a lot of folks and you've helped a lot of folks with Lightroom. Are there any smart searches you could do today, even if you haven't been really good at organizing your library, that are still helpful? Yeah. Um, how about how about I share my screen and I'll um, show you one of the ones that I use uh, <clears throat> to do that. Hey, while okay. you're sharing your screen, Rich, what's that? What's that uh, keyboard shortcut to zoom in on a portion of your screen on a Mac? Uh, control, control. Hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel mouse or Option Command Plus. Option Command Plus. Man, I've disabled it somehow. I guess. <laughs> 
No problem. So Levi's got his screen up, and Rob's got his screen up. There we go. We're on you, Rob. Can you see me now? All right, cool. Yep. All right, so I have this uh, collection set here that I call Catalog Dashboard, and in it are a number of other collection sets, and inside of them uh, are various collections, and these are all smart collections. So here's this one. I'm going to collapse the Navigator panel just to get some more space here. So I created this um, by month collection set, and so that inside of each of these smart collections, I can pull up just all the photos I've ever taken in, say, January, going back the entire span of my catalog. Now, this catalog on my laptop is, is really just a small one that I've got mostly from when I travel. I was going to say, it so, looks like you're on house arrest for January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I haven't, I haven't shot anything yet this year. Um, but on my master catalog on my desktop machine, it goes back to 2000, so I can... It's kind of interesting for me. It's not necessarily helpful uh, in the day to day, but I, it's especially now I have kids, right? So I can look in January and I could just see, you know, what it's like in, in the when we're outside in the winter, you know, over a span of ten years. And so what one of these looks like is just using the capture date based on the year, and it spans for the uh, for the for that particular month. And I've got one set up for each month through the year, and that's just kind of one I did for fun. But then I've got this other one on file types, and this just gives me a quick look at what I've got in this catalog. So I can do a smart collection based on bits per channel, and so I can find all the 32-bit TIFFs I have in my catalog, and these are ones that I use for uh, doing kind of HDR tone mapping inside of Lightroom. I can find any DNG files. I can find JPEG files, P PNG, and so on and so on. And uh, I find this just another interesting way just for me to kind of see what's going on in my catalog. Sometimes uh, I've got a bunch of TIFF files that I wind up creating uh, in testing or whatever, and I just need to go back and delete these because they take up a lot of hard drive space. Um, so it's just kind of a neat way using smart collections. These don't rely on any, any additional metadata that I've added. Uh, it's just using the file type. Uh, criteria inside the smart collection. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna officially say I want you to write that down, which is good because we're actually all of us working on a Lightroom <laughs> getting organized book that'll be out in a couple of months. So uh, we'll definitely put that in there. Speaking of getting organized, we had a question that I think is an important one to address. Uh, essentially, um, a lot of folks are wondering when they import. Oh, okay it's now going to make double the amount of storage. And one of the important options, maybe, Levi, you could show this on the import dialog, and, and this is something that I found. When I moved from Aperture to Lightroom, I already had all of my stuff organized in folders. And one of the things I decided to do was, you know what, I could just add those but leave them in their current place. Levi, if you've got your screen up, do you mind showing a little bit with the import module, and then maybe all three of you guys could talk about some do's and don'ts with this? You bet. And and it's also, um, I think it ties into this other question, yeah, um, that both Troy and Katrine, Katrine had a question about, about backups too. And, yeah. and so the thing about Lightroom is that it doesn't have your pictures in it. It's just a catalog, which is, I I don't know if I'm the last guy to use a card catalog in the universe, but <laughs> when I went to the library as a kid, I would open up the drawers and flip through and find all the books from Roald Dahl and, and pick up the card that I wanted to, and it's got the uh, the shelf that, the, that my book is on written down on this card, and I've got to go over to the shelf and reference the, the number off the card to find it on the shelf. But if somebody moved the book on the shelf, to a different shelf, then my uh, the, the catalog is no longer any good. Um, and and this is exactly like the Lightroom catalog. It's it's just a reference to your pictures. Your so pictures have, aren't inside Lightroom. They're so we've on got, your hard drive. We've got four options here, and uh, why don't you take the first one and then guys jump in? You know, we have the ability here to copy things into a specified location as a digital negative, which is essentially converting the raw file, right? Right. Right, and, and your screen may look like this when you first pull it up. Um, if you click on this little arrow in the bottom left corner, it'll, it'll expand and give you some more information. So the first one I do when I'm importing from a memory card is I do copy as DNG. Um, that's a personal choice. You could also just do copy, but um, copying as a DNG changes the raw file into a DNG, 
which is also a raw file, but it's smaller. It throws away some stuff that I'm never going to use anyway. And so I really appreciate that. My, my pictures are about 20% smaller files without affecting my usable quality. And, uh, and so I like to do that. And when I do that, now I'm copying from the card into the computer. You start over here on the left and tell it where you want it to go over here on the right side. And so the picture is still on my card, and now it's on my computer as, or, or wherever I'm directing it to. Whichever of my external drives are plugged in, I'll show up over here, and I can choose where that's going to go. And are you choosing two destinations or one when you copy the first time? Um, I'm personally choosing one. However, so I generally go to this one called Files, and it's a RAID system. So it's, it's, it's two hard drives uh, with the same picture on both of them. And it, okay. it's actually like eight hard drives with the same picture distributed over, I don't know. I had a guy set it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gerard, anything you want to add in comment here to, to the importing option? You yeah, know, that, that, the Levi shouldn't have to pay somebody. He can just use Mosaic and he'd be fine. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> that, that, that and Levi is, you know, the, the last one using a card catalog system. So, uh, you know, they, they have these new things called the Internet. You can search for books now. Um, but I get you right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, on the import dialog... Like most things in Lightroom, it works from left to right. Um, and so uh, what you're doing really in the import dialog is you're taking things from the left. So on um, on Levi's Nikon, I can't read that. D- D-800, yeah. D-800, yeah. Um, that's what you're taking it from. And then what you're doing in the middle is what you're doing to it. And he's copying it as a DNG. And then on the right-hand side is where do you want to put it and how do you want Lightroom to treat it. Um, and basically... In Adobe's convoluted way, uh, all of the the UI in Lightroom works basically the same way, where you're doing things on the left and then you're going to finish things on the right. Um, now, you, as Rich said, you, you have sort of four options there. You have copy as DNG, and that will transform your raw. Oops, we lost him again. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> So, Rob, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on you. So, okay. Pet, just so everyone knows at home, Gerard is in a very snowy place, and apparently it's interfering with his internet webs. <laughs> Come back. Um, to this end, you know we have this option here. We can copy. Uh, personally, one of the things I'm doing when I copy is I'm just copying it, and then I'm using a file utility that each night scans my main backup drive and clones it to another attached drive. Are, Rob, do you recommend letting Lightroom do that initial clone and copy to two places, or are you a, a manual control freak? What's your take on how to handle this? <laughs> um, well, when you have your photos on a memory card, um, these tiny little things, that's the most point right, in the workflow. And uh, Lightroom has the ability to to help you facilitate copying those photos to two different locations, two different, preferably two different drives, Don't not two different folders on the same drive, but um, inside the file handling panel on the import dialog uh, is the make a second copy to option. And uh, that's a great option if you don't have any other alternative. I actually use, I have this old Epson uh, portable hard drive that has uh, memory card slots built into it. So when I'm out in the field, I can just pop the cards in them and have uh, a backup immediately made of my memory card so that when I get back to my laptop or if I get home to my desktop, when I'm copying into uh, Lightroom, when I, I want to rephrase that. When I'm copying my photos to my hard drive using Lightroom, because they're not going into Lightroom, um, then I only make uh, a single copy at that time. And uh, that's just how I like to do it. But there's nothing wrong with using the make a second copy to option in the file handling panel. The, your only, your only uh, priority at that point is getting those photos duplicated on two different drives as soon as possible so that your memory card can get formatted and returned to service and just so that you've got a redundant copy. Um, but however you, however you achieve that end doesn't matter as much as long as you actually do it. As soon right. as I speak, as soon as I speak, I seem to crash. But I, I think that um, we, which might say something about me versus mm-hmm. Google. Um, the, the just to answer Katrine's question, um, 
she shouldn't just back up the catalog. You need to back up the catalog as well as your master images. Uh, both are in very, very important. So your catalog ha has a lot of your metadata. It has uh, a, a, all of your um, collections, all of your uh, uh, stars, and all that. All your development edits are held in the uh, in the catalog. So you certainly need to back up the catalog. Um, but your catalog is not your images. Your images are not your catalog. Um, so you do need to back up both your catalog and your images. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, one, just, one thing about that, too, is that Lightroom doesn't do anything to your original image. The only thing it does to your original image, it can do to your original image, is move it or delete it. When you make edits, when you make finishing adjustments in the develop module, you're only affecting the card catalog version of the picture. You're not affecting your original image. Is that right, Rob? Yes, yeah. And I also would just, I'm just going to add on. I know Katrine, uh, and I know that she also uses Photoshop a lot. And so when you're using Lightroom in conjunction with Photoshop, you're also probably going to be making some derivative copies in t for PSD format. And so you may have all your photos uh, backed up uh, from your work session on that uh, day before. Uh, now you've just worked in Lightroom and you've sent some copies over to Photoshop for additional editing and now you've got some derivative copies. You've got some TIFF files or PSD files. Backing up your catalog is important, as Gerard pointed out, uh, but you need to re uh, have your backup system run again at least, to, at least to bring in all the new files or any updated files uh, such as PSDs or TIFFs that you've done inside of Photoshop. So you've got to definitely be doing both of those jobs because Lightroom can only do one of them. I want to take it global for a second. We've had a couple of questions on this issue where people are um, confused about the number of backups and the number of catalogs that they should be running. So I want to start with the number of backups. And, and this is all very much a philosophy and what you can afford. But personally, I have four copies going. Um, I'm taking everything to OneDrive when I import and then automatically every night it makes a clone to a second drive and those drives themselves are redundant so there's five bays in the unit two of the drives can fail so I have redundant redundant and then I make another copy to just a, a slow spinning disk that I take and leave at my office periodically and then I'm pushing another copy up to the cloud with Mosaic to back up everything that I, at this point I'm backing up everything, but I'm going to eventually downgrade that to only backing up my three stars and up. Um, do you guys have any take on how you're handling that? Exactly how many drives you think is recommended? You know, who wants to go first? I, I can take a, I can take a stab at it, and Rob, Rob can answer it as well. Um, I know that Brad Jones just, just gave a nice suggestion there of Chronosync, um, and uh, there's a bunch of, of programs like this. Uh, Chronosync is very good. Super Duper is another one. So what I do um, is I do not make the second copy, the duplicate copy, um, and, and the reason why is I, I use a couple of different features. First, I delete a lot of my photos, and when you delete them from Lightroom, you're deleting the file. Um, I didn't want my backup copy to get out of sync. Um, and so what I do is I actually make a, um, a time machine-like backup, a complete mirror of my drive and my external drive nightly. Um, and that way I have one copy of my uh, exact Lightroom catalog um, and my library uh, saved every night. And that's on site. And it, one of the reasons why I do that as well is that um, in super duper chronosync uh, time machine, if you have a very small catalog on one computer. Uh, I use we'll Carbon Copy Cloner. Carbon oh. Copy Cloner is another one. Um, all very good ones. On Windows, uh, uh, vice versa Pro. Yep. Uh, you can find lots of these, these cloning tools, and they're, they're all pretty cheap and they're all pretty darn good. Um, the reason why I do that for the, the local one is that Lightroom is a catalog. What it does is it refers to a place in your system where your photos live. And so if for some reason my internal drive dies, I can just take my, my copy that I made and I can be back in business within 10 minutes. Um, it also will, I also use this other feature in Lightroom called Write Files to XMP, which will actually write my edit changes to the raw file. Um, and so that way I can have sort of my belt and suspenders type of backup approach where I'm backing up the catalog as well as backing up all my edits to my, to my original files as well. I have Levi's um, screen up. Can you tell people where to access that preference? Because I think that's an important one. Essentially what you're saying here is if your catalog was to blow up, 
the worst case in the world is all your edits would still be there, all your metadata would still be there, you would just re-import the folder and add it back to a new catalog, correct? That's, that's correct, yes. Yeah. So, Levi, if you can go up to your Lightroom menu and go to the catalog settings for me. Lightroom menu, here we go. Um, that's under I've, edit on Windows. Right, I've got to switch <laughs> screens. I've, I've, got it on my, I've got it on my second screen over there. Hang on. And sorry about that. It's okay. Levi's back. Desktop and uh, one. people are asking where the hat where's the hat, Levi? So where's the hat? <laughs> that's that's why I've had the, the screen up. Uh, okay, so Lightroom. You're, you're on Let's black, check. so there you go. Oh, we're seeing the we're seeing Here's, the window yeah, and the window. So that's fine. Right. Just choose edit. Fix the window and the window. Oh well, here we go. Nope. <laughs> That's okay. Gerard, explain where it is while Levi goes hunting for it. This is the benefit of live, and we'll, we'll do a follow-up post on this as well. Here we go. Here it is. Catalog Preferences. Settings. Catalog settings. Check. Sorry, and I, I keep dropping off, too, so as soon as Lightroom, I start talking... Catalog settings, metadata. Okay. Metadata. Check. And then that That's third one down... Automatically write changes into XMP. There you go. Levi now has a safer library. Can I, I do thought the, I did, man. Can I, can I do the caveat to that setting? Yeah, can please I, do, can I do that. So um, this is this is one of these areas of Lightroom that that often generates a lot of uh, discussion. Put it that way. Um, <laughs> That's so, a very polite way of saying it. Yeah. So when Lightroom one first came out, um, this setting was checked by default, and what what happened? So that was what eight years ago. Jeez. Uh, uh, Computer hardware wasn't quite what it was today, and that unfortunately resulted in a lot of performance issues for, for folks. So that uh, option was uh, subsequently unchecked by default moving forward. And so what happens when you have that checked? All right, uh, Lightroom will then start writing. It, it still writes to the catalog, and still the catalog is still the primary repository of all the work you do inside of Lightroom. But when that option's checked, Lightroom will also write uh, changes to the XMP metadata space of every photo in your in your catalog. Now, when you first check that box, if you've got a catalog, say, of 100,000 photos, Lightroom is going to start writing to every single one of those photos immediately, and you're going to feel it, right? So don't just check it uh, without thinking through uh, what what what's going to happen there. Once it gets caught up. Then, if you have a more, if you have current set of hardware, you're probably not going to notice that performance. But be aware, you could experience a bit of a performance uh, lag when you first check it, and moving forward, if you're doing a lot of high volume edits, because you're have, now having Lightroom do two things at once, at least, which is write to the catalog file like it always does, and then also write those changes into XMP metadata. Now, Rob, if if you're using DNGs, does it? It changes this a little bit because the XMP is included in the DNG, right? Well, there's a change in, in terms of the fact that there's not a sidecar file generated, all right? So re regardless of the file type, right, what happens is Lightroom writes to the file. Now, if it can actually write to the file itself for TIFF, PSD, JPEG, and DNG, then no sidecar file is, is created, and it, Lightroom just writes to that particular file. If it's a, a proprietary RAW format, NEF, CRW, so on, now a sidecar file is created. But the but the function of Lightroom writing from the catalog into the metadata space of the photos still happens, no matter what your file type is. There is another checkbox there to have Lightroom also uh, write to the JPEG, TIFF, and and, and so on. Um, so one of the other things to keep in mind, and it ties into backup as well. So if you have a backup system that uh, runs every day and it checks to see what files have changed and it only updates the files that have changed, and say you add a single keyword to all of your DNG files, well, that's going to register as a change and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause all those DNG files to be backed up again. Um, and that could cause your backup to go a little bit longer. So there's just some other, other implications to think about uh, when you check that box. Um, there's nothing wrong with checking it if, every, if, if, that's, if that's what you want to do. I just really want people to always be in the driver's seat uh, when they're using Lightroom. It's easy to uh, 
just do certain things and not not always be aware of what you're actually what you're actually doing. An, another another point I'll just throw out quickly is that not everything that Lightroom can store can be written into metadata space. All right, so it's not a, an exact duplicate of a of what's in the catalog. It's almost everything, but for example, regular collections, uh, regular collection membership can't be written to XMP metadata space. Virtual copies can't be written into XM, XMP metadata space. Flag state can't be written. Flags, right? Um, and all the individual history steps over time can't be written. Only the last, most current uh, settings are written in. So. Which is arguably the most important, right? Is the last thing you did, um, but just don't think that it's a complete uh, same amount of information as as is found in the catalog file. So that catalog file is still really important. So sorry, right, I can no, get no, going. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take us on to a new topic just so we can get through some of our things today. And uh, one of the questions that people seem to struggle with is, okay we've got all these things and I've imported what happens when something goes missing you know it says it can't find the files let's talk a little bit about the concept of preview images and offline images versus an online image how's that all work and uh, who wants to go first I, uh, I I screw this up a lot so maybe I can help <laughs> oh the hat's back <laughs> the hat's back I got the hat on. Right. Um, one of the so one of the things that happens if you go over to the to the stacks and move a book now the catalog doesn't know where that book is anymore and the same thing happens on your computer if you if you go to finder or to windows explorer and move a picture file then lightroom no longer knows where that is and it shows you a question mark on your picture and uh and it says, like, do you want to locate the picture? And so if you see a question mark, you can just click on the question mark and, and locate it And because you've moved it outside of Lightroom. So I, I generally recommend that you usually, well, I've, I've usually recommended, although I had a conversation with Rob the other day that's changing my mind completely, um, I usually recommended that you move everything using Lightroom, that you, if you want to move a folder or move a picture, you do it in Lightroom and uh, that way you don't get any of these these question mark problems wondering where the pictures are um, however and well and so if you get a question mark all you do is click on the question mark and click locate and then navigate to where that picture is and it heals itself so so don't freak <laughs> out when it says I can't find the picture don't worry it's still there Lightroom hasn't deleted anything unless you told it to delete it um, it's it's safe. It's okay. And so Rob could tell us how to fix that though using what did we call it, Rob? Update update folder. Is that the right? Yeah. Well, command. Um, there's there's the one part of it which is to avoid it from happening uh, in the first place. And so um, if you use Lightroom as your primary window into all your photos, and you use Lightroom to do all the moving of of photos from from one folder to another folder, or even from one drive to another drive. This is the kind of questions I get most commonly on the help desk is the file management types of questions. And uh, it's, I just got, my, my drive is getting full, I need to move to a new drive. Or I, I have a larger drive and I need to add that into my workflow. Um, if you use Lightroom to move file, photos between folders, then you don't get question marks. All right? And then there's another way to say, um, Maybe it'd be better if I just did it. How about that? I mean, let me just yeah. uh, do a little show. Show a little show. <laughs> as as Rob gets set up, I, every time I talk for more than a minute, I crash. So I'll be quick. Um, is uh, we and the customer support on Mosaic side. This is when customers call in with we call the question mark of death, and they, <laughs> they they get all panicky, and we say we can fix this really fast. And as Rob will show you, it's a pretty fast fix. And, and what, what are some of the situations that create this problem? Is it really that you're moving things at the desktop or the finder level or the explorer level and in Lightroom? Or, uh, you know, what, what is the triggering event? The most, the most common trigger is uh, someone, I mean, this happens to all of us. You, you, you want to do some housekeeping. You've got your files are all over the place. You're feeling a bit disorganized. And so you go to your happy place, which isn't often Lightroom. It might be Finder or Windows Explorer and you start moving stuff around or you start deleting stuff or you start renaming things so any of those actions moving renaming or deleting 
uh, makes the path that's stored inside the catalog file. So during that import process, Lightroom has kind of a virtual handshake with each photo and makes a note of where that photo is stored from the from the volume level on, on Mac or from the drive letter on Windows through all the various folders to the file name. So if anything in that path gets changed outside of Lightroom, Lightroom goes, sorry, dude, I don't know where your stuff is. You're going to have to help me find it. And that's when you see the question mark. If the, if the path is broken at the folder level or, be, or behind, then you'll see a question mark on the folder level. If it's just something within a folder, like maybe you just deleted some photos, then you'll see in, when, in Lightroom 5 now, they change it from a question mark. It's now an exclamation point. Um, Lightroom 4 and below, it was a question mark. In version and, six, will be an ampersand. Just for <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, the, typographic joke. Yeah, the, the change was due to the whole smart previews, which is a whole other conversation. But um, so you have two options when you see a question mark on a folder or an exclamation point on a thumbnail, which is option one: put everything back the way Lightroom expected it to find it. If you just put stuff back, if that's possible. Uh, that's usually sometimes the easiest solution, all right? Uh, then Lightroom goes, oh, there it is. Now I see it. Um, the other option is to actually have light, is to help Lightroom. You have to do this manually to reconnect uh, the catalog to where the photos are currently stored. So is my screen up now? It yeah. is. All right, cool. So let me show you a basic, a couple of basic things. And uh, one of the most common things is I want to move some photos to another drive, all right? And so let me say I want to, I'm going to pick a smaller folder here. I'm going to take this folder here with 22 photos just for, for speed purposes, and I want to move it to an external hard drive. Now, right now in my folders panel, I only have my internal drive showing, and I want to bring, in, bring these photos, and, and I want to move them over to another drive. All right. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I want to move these photos out of my imported photos folder just to show you how you can move them. And... For me, this imp I have a folder that uh, lives in my pictures folder on this drive. If I have any external drives, they always start for me. Uh, I just call that, fo that folder imported photos. That just tells me that any, any photos and folders inside of here are being managed by Lightroom and don't mess with them outside of Lightroom. All right? And so if I want to move, let's say, this folder uh, out of imported photos and I want to put it maybe in my pictures folder, right? Well, I can't because my pictures folder isn't actually showing in this hierarchy. But if I right click on this folder and I choose show parent folder, it's going to bring that, pic that pictures folder or whatever the next parent level uh, up into the folders panel. All right? And so now I can click and drag on a folder. And I'll just pick this one again. And I'll drag it up. Come on. And I'm just going to drop it in the pictures folder. And you're going to get this move dialog. It has a don't show again checkbox in it, but I really recommend to yeah. leave that unchecked. Because this right. is your like warning uh, right. if you inadvertently do that. And I've done this. And, and then if you didn't want to do it, you just click cancel, and you just saved yourself having to figure out what you just did to yourself. I'm going to click move. And so now that, uh, that particular folder is at the root of the pictures folder and outside of this imported photos folder. Now, if you wanted to make a copy for a client, would you move it to another drive, copy it to a drive, or use the export command? Yeah, I, if, if I'm going to make a copy, then I want to use the export command, because that way, then the, any Lightroom edits that I've done are applied to the copies, all right? And so think of whenever you think of the word copy, for the most part, with Lightroom, it's an export function. But now let's pretend I wanted to move all 8,000 of these photos. I'm not going to do that, because that would take too long. But if I wanted to move these off of my internal hard drive, because it was just filling up my drive and I just needed to bring the, uh, to save some space, and I wanted to put them on this external drive that's connected but not showing inside a Lightroom. So there's a function called update folders, all right? And I just right-clicked uh, on, um, on, a, on a folder here, and you can choose update folder location. But what I want to do is actually uh, do that for this Yosemite folder, and I want to make sure that it's on my other drive. So I'm going to switch over here. Is my other screen showing now? Yes. And so I have these two finder windows, and I did this earlier just to save time. I copied that folder uh, from this location over to this external hard drive. All right. So it's the same folder in both places. Lightroom is managing it on my internal drive. 
and I want to point Lightroom and say, hey, look, I just copied, now use your imagination, all 8,000 photos over to this other drive. And now why would I use a copy operation when I could just use Lightroom to move all 8,000 photos? I would just be leery of using Lightroom to move 8,000 photos from uh, an internal drive to an external hard drive because something bad could happen, all right? I have two cats. One of them could jump up and knock that external <laughs> drive over. You know, I'm often traveling or working in a coffee shop. It's just too easy to have an external drive disconnected in the middle of a major data move like that. And, and, and one of our, uh, looks like six logmen has, has had similar uh, problems, and, and I have too, where where for some reason it just stops copying, or yeah. it stops moving, or it freezes up. Now, if you use a move operation, what is a move operation? First it's a copy, then it's a delete. All right, and so if, if things happen in the middle there that, that could be really bad, you could wind up actually losing some data. So I like to use this copy operation where I, I actually copy them outside of Lightroom. So I use I used Finder in this case, and I just went copy over here to the external hard drive. So now I have my photos are in two locations, and I can redirect Lightroom to the other location. Once I know that's done, then I can manually go in and delete the other photos from the internal drive and get and recover that hard drive space. So it's just a much safer operation to much basically you're you're splitting the tasks apart. Well, before we go on to our next topic, we've got about ten minutes left in this in today's show. Uh, we have a prize to give away thanks to Gerard, and I am going to randomly pick from the RSVP list. If your name is called, we're going to give the person a chance to reply. What I need you to do is either tweet me at Red Pixel, so just send a tweet to at Red Pixel, or reply on the event page that you are here, because you have to be at the event to win. So I'm going off of the, uh, the list here of people who attended the event, who signed up that they're RSVPing, and our winner is random name generator Paul Dangler Kyle Paul Dangler Kyle congrats Paul so Paul if you are here you need to either tweet me or put a comment into the uh, the either of the event page letting us know that you are indeed here so we can see that and uh, what we will do then is we will make sure to let you know now we're going to go forward here and keep talking but we're going to give Paul two minutes to reply <laughs> that he's actually here and attending live and Gerard can you take a moment just to sort of explain the prize that you're giving away so people understand what your service does and, and what a cool thing Paul just won so Paul just won uh, six months of our professional backup service, which is two terabytes of Lightroom uh, photos. Um, that will you can back up any two terabytes. You can have Mosaic select everything in your catalog, or you can use your metadata to do a selective backup. Meaning you can say, if I just use pick flags, you can say Mosaic, please back up two terabytes of my pick flags. Um, so you get nice secure offsite backup with every backup plan. You also get free access to the Mosaic. Um, mobile app, which will allow you to see all your Lightroom photos on the go, as well as to rate and flag them from the mobile app, and they synchronize back to Lightroom automatically, which is great. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, I don't have a tweet yet from Paul or a post. I'm checking the things, but we're going to go forward. I'm going to give it just another minute. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about mobile workflows for a second? There's been a lot of questions about, I have to go on the road, and I don't know if I should have you know, how I have handle having multiple catalogs. Should I keep multiple catalogs and then just use them, or should I merge one catalog into another when I get off of a road trip? Uh, Rob, why don't we start with you just to talk about some mobile strategies. I know you're a bit of a road warrior, and then everybody can chime in a bit, and I'm going to go see if Paul has RSVP'd yet. All right. Uh, yeah, so what I do uh, is I, I bring a laptop um, when I travel, and on that laptop I have uh, kind of what I consider a temporary catalog. Um, my master catalog that has everything. I, I'm kind of a one catalog person, uh, and that works for me. It's not, not ideal for everyone, but uh, it works well for me. And so my laptop catalog is my travel catalog, and so I'll go on the road, and I'll bring, I can bring some photos with me that are in my master catalog. And as I'm shooting, I import those photos into my laptop catalog. I can edit them while I'm on the road, and then when I return... I can use the catalog export function to export those new files out of my temporary catalog, use an external hard drive, and transfer them over to my desktop machine, where I use the catalog import function 
to bring those into the master catalog. So uh, that way I'm using Lightroom's uh, internal functionality to kind of hand off the data, but it also allows me to copy the photos uh, from one place to another place as part of that process. Hey Rob, can you talk about why you use the master catalog approach um, as opposed to doing you know, what we see some other folks do of a um, separate catalog per shoot or other strategies? Yeah, so the single catalog versus multiple catalog. I, I, I like using a single catalog because it keeps things simple for me. And so if you're someone who has an external organizational system that is logical and scalable, then using individual catalogs within that system can work really well. So, for example, I know uh, Alan Hess, a uh, concert photographer who I admire, uh, I talked to him about this a while back at Photoshop World, and he uses, an he uses a multiple catalog approach because he can have a very discreet organizational system that is a per event and he can use his external organizational system to find what he needs and go right into it. A wedding photographer might also work in the same way, where you can have a multiple catalog system and it scales and it, and it makes a logical sense to you. What you have to keep in mind is Lightroom can't search across catalogs. And so by dividing your work into multiple catalogs, you're losing that ability of Lightroom to organize and manage and group and search amongst uh, photos that span maybe a lot of different events, years, whatever the, whatever the criteria might be. So for me, I like having a single catalog because then I can use Lightroom to group all those photos, to find them, to access them, uh, to pull them up for different reasons, and I only go to one place and I can make the best use of that. So um, as long as you understand your system and it, and it works and is scalable, that's the other big part, is you just don't ever want to have to ask yourself, which catalog should this go in, all right? Uh, or even worse, which catalog did I put that in? Um, because then you're you're defeating the one of Lightroom's greatest strengths, which is is doing that work for you. Right. Now, before we go on and, and talk on this a little bit more, we did not hear back from our winner. He RSVP'd to the event, but he doesn't appear to be in our live audience, which was a requirement. So uh, the next pick was Peter Zerla. So Peter, if you are here. Be sure right, to Peter. either put a post into the comments section on either of the, the pages. We've got the two Hangout pages. You can add a comment that you're listening. You could put a comment in the Q&A field, or you could send a tweet to RedPixel, R-H-E-D-P-I-X-E-L. So that's Peter Zerla. I'll give you two minutes to reply, and, and then we'll go forward from there. Levi, you're on the road a lot. Do you have any personal strategies for staying organized? Um, yeah, well, and, and real quick on the on the multiple catalog thing, I know when I was using Lightroom 2, things slowed down when I got up around 100,000 pictures in, in a single catalog, and that was that was one reason a lot of people started the habit of using multiple catalogs, but I, I don't find that that's a problem anymore, and so I I do keep everything in a, in a master catalog, um, and I, I don't even open another catalog for, for traveling these days. Um, I just import everything into the same catalog, but probably on a different disk. Like I've got uh, I've got a couple of, of small hard drives that I, I carry. This has Velcro on it because I stick it to the lid of the laptop so it doesn't <laughs> fall off the little tray table on the, on the airplane. I, I thought and, that was uh, a floppy disk for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I carry these with me, and I store my pictures on, on, on uh, two hard drives when I travel. And one is a backup of the, of the pictures on each hard drive. So... Let me let me say that again. <laughs> I copy I copy my pictures from my cards to this hard drive, and then I copy them to the other hard drive. And only one of the hard drives has I, I only import one of them into Lightroom. The other is just a backup, and I stick that one in my suitcase that gets checked, and I carry this one on with me. And that way, uh, if I leave it in the back of the seat pocket again. I don't freak out <laughs> because that that happened to me once recently where I I left it in the uh, in the back of the plane in, in the seat pocket in front of me. Fortunately, those were already backed up on Mosaic, and I still had them on my memory card, and I had the backup elsewhere. But so I still we, freaked we, out. I flip that drive backwards and let me see the other side of the drive. 
You bet. Okay, so you have your business card. Here, here's what yes. I do. I, I take the label tape and I label all of my drives reward if found, and I put my exactly. cell phone number. And I've had a few phone calls because <laughs> <That's good, yeah. laughs> I travel with a lot of drives. And trust me, the the incentive of a little bit of money. So are you saying reward? I see you got your business card, but uh... um, I should say yes. I've I've <laughs> thought that since I left that behind, I've, I've thought I should put a reward. I just get, on I there just for sure. When I'm anywhere near Rich, I just grab one out of his bag and then call him up for the reward later. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, any, any advice you could add here for, for multiple catalog workflow? You've got people backing things up online. You know, do you see problems with using multiple catalogs? Um, I don't. Uh, I, I, I'm a big proponent, like Rob, of, um, of the single master catalog approach. Um, as Levi said, in some of the older versions of Lightroom, uh, having 100,000 photos was an issue. Um, we've We've done some tests internally at Mosaic, and it seems that about half a million is where we start to notice things. Um, it really depends on your hardware, so that's a huge caveat there. Um, wedding photographers seem to throw everything out the window because they take w way more photos than almost anybody. Um, but for most folks, I think the master catalog is the best approach. If you do choose the multiple catalog approach, um, again, make sure it's scalable. Uh, not to talk about Mosaic all the time, but one of the benefits of Mosaic is that we do support multiple catalogs, and you can search between catalogs on our mobile app, um, wow. which, which one of our, uh, a lot of our customers really like as well. Very cool, very cool. Well, we did not have an RSVP, so I drew one more name. It's really weird. So, folks, we're going to smooth out the awards process next time. i got to find a way. Like, <laughs> we'll we'll give away more prizes if no one shows up. This is great. Yeah, the, the way Google works is they show us an RSVP list, and then they show us how many people are still watching live. And we said you had to be watching live. But I know he's watching live because I see his name in the comments field, and his name just came up off the RSVP list. So and I'm going to butcher it, but Six Langman, okay. uh, if you are six. here, comment. <laughs> let us know you are here, and, and you have a six-month mosaic uh, solution for backing up your images, which is something all of us are actually using. Now, I want to. we're going to be wrapping up here in a second, but I wanted to give you all some news, a couple of things. First off, we talked about a lot of strategies here. We're going to be taking this post from today's Hangout. We'll make it live so you can easily share this with other folks and, and get that out there, let other folks see it, learn from it, so you can definitely publish that. Uh, we are also going to be uh, publishing a new book on getting organized with like so we are working on an ebook. You'll be able to find out about that first from Photo Focus. And if you pay attention to what we're doing on a regular basis, what's going to happen is you'll actually be able to get that ebook for free. So we're going to put all these good ideas down. That's going to be coming out shortly. Rob, <laughs> Levi, you guys are taking over the official hosting duties. Tell us what's the next Google Hangout going to be on. Rob, you want to tell a little bit about what you guys were brainstorming? Uh, yeah, well, we I think we brainstormed the day, uh, February 19th, I think was the day we picked, and we we had a bunch of topics in mind, um, and I don't think we really we nearly nailed, nailed one down yet. So you want to you uh, want to throw some of the ideas out and let let the let the Google universe comment on what they'd like? Yeah, well, I think we could easily uh, do this one again. I mean, there's so much uh, there's so much to this, um, and there's uh, it, is, you know, it, it is. I say this all the time. This is the most boring, dull as dirt stuff. But this is what I get asked all the time. This is what causes the, the most tears, hair pulling, frustration. It so I'm, I'm, I'm going to institute a small rule. We can alternate. So the next <laughs> yes. one has to be pretty simple, and then we'll right, go back. Right. <laughs> something, something sexier. Something yeah, sexier. let's let's alternate because uh, let's do left brain, right brain. So, okay. so Levi, so as an aesthetic person, what do you want to see next? What do you think? Oh, let's uh, let's do something in in develop module, um, and maybe it includes some some organization stuff, like maybe some round trip workflow, uh, and we'll we'll do some. Uh, Oh, how about how about black and whites? Best best black and white. A whole hour on black and white. What do you think, Rob? I'm done with yeah. that. How about uh, we'll throw in uh, just for my organizational uh, part of my brain how to organize your presets as well. That's something. That's I great. Yes, that work. goes right along with. I, I want to see more hats from Levi and more backdrops <laughs> from Rob. That's really <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Please please to show up. It should be for that. Yes. I've got my Valentine's Day back up, backdrop. Up. I need to. I need to keep that around other my videos. All right. I need, so, I yeah. need some cool backdrops. I got a conference room back here. This is lame. <laughs> All right. So so to wrap things up today, folks. Here's what happened. So six, we got your confirmation that you were.
were here. Uh, make sure you drop us an email or, or post a comment on the PhotoFocus website with your contact information. I'll put you in touch with Gerard. Uh, we will have some prizes on every Hangout. Uh, as the guy said, we're going to be back on February 19th. It sounds like the topic is going to be a combination of black and white developing plus making new presets as you're doing that developing. We might do some round trip workflows with some cool plugins. Uh, I know I want to show my HDR workflow for black and white a and then we'll also show you how to back up those things. So it sounds like that's a good left brain, right brain thing. Why don't we wrap up the show and give each of you a chance to, to mention a cool thing you've discovered in the Lightroom universe or, or something useful. Rob, one thing people should check out between now and the next Hangout. <laughs> Glad he started with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, uh, all right, cool thing. Um, all right, I'll give a shout out. Uh, there's uh, a great set of uh, plugins for Lightroom, uh, kind of going along the organizational side of things. Uh, Photographer's Toolbox, I believe it's called. And there's um, a number of great, brilliant uh, developers who contribute to that. And yeah, photographers-toolbox.com, and uh, there's a just a bunch of plugins that are not at all about uh, developing, but really about helping you manage, helping to export different ways. Um, just a lot of really cool, nerdy, uh, geeky stuff in there. Uh, so give those guys a nice shout out. Excellent, Levi. You're up next. Something cool that you've been using a lot lately that you like. Um, the best thing about Lightroom is all the keyboard shortcuts. You gotta, you gotta figure these out. And there is, I think, if you just Google Lightroom keyboard shortcuts, you get a PDF from Adobe with keyboard shortcuts for each module. And some of them are really obscure, <laughs> but yeah. some of them are super handy. Um, just like E takes you to the library module. D takes you to develop. Um, Command P takes you to the print module. Spacebar zooms in and out. Um, Spacebar, when you're using a tool, lets you pan around. These are things that will just save you so much time. Um, so I highly recommend keyboard shortcuts. All right. And Gerard, your turn. Looks like you got something you want to mention. Yes, yeah, so I got one quick thing on the collections. Collections uh, will automatically put things with numbers in them on the top. Uh, so if you have one collection that you really like or one smart collection that you use all the time, uh, one of my little hints is to put the number one in there first, um, and then that way it will always show up on top. So this is my family uh, catalog and also my teaching catalog. So I roll, so you can I'm only seeing your, um, the center. I don't know if anyone's... Do you see uh, the side panels? Yeah, hit uh, hit tab or or lights. Hold yeah, on. it looks hit hit tab. No, it's not. It's not. It's not lights out. I think it's the Google Plus thing. Hold on one oh. second. We'll, we'll share. We'll share. <laughs> All right. share. Share your whole desktop. There Just, we go. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. It's yeah. Okay. There it is. There we go. So, so over here in collections, you can see that I have this number one named number two. So if you have a, a bunch of collections that you use often or smart collections that you use often, if you put the number one in it, it'll always show up on top, which is, uh, I think, kind of cool. That is Very cool. cool. Very cool. So, well... And uh, definitely, that's a great tip. Guys, I really appreciate you putting the show together. A couple just a general housekeeping announcements for everyone who came today. Yes, this is available for watching. We'll post the video up to uh, the PhotoFocus website. And, of course, if you found the event page, you can watch the video on demand anytime. We'd really appreciate you guys sharing that with your friends and on social media. Uh, if you just discovered us through Google Plus or someplace else, be sure to check out PhotoFocus.com. We have two to three new stories every day single day and uh, the whole team that you met here today does contribute to the site you'll be able to find that and of course we have a podcast that comes out three times a month the Google Hangout that we're doing on Lightroom is going to be every month Rob and Levi are going to be leading that Gerard and I will drop in as guests from time to time but of course for next month guys go ahead and get some fresh guests anybody else that you want to add to the show and uh, if you guys have some great work and you want to be featured on Photo Focus, just share your pictures to the Photo Focus G Plus group. Melissa New, the site's editor, goes through each week and picks two or three people to put the spotlight on. And just keep in mind, if your photo is selected, 
our email list alone has more than 200,000 people on it. So if your picture is picked, it goes out as the pick to almost a quarter million folks. So that's some great exposure for you and your work. And that's what PhotoFocus is about, not just putting techniques forward and helping people learn more, but putting the spotlight on fantastic photographers and those helping the photo industry. So guys, thanks so much for joining us. Rob, uh, always good to have you. Wonderful knowledge. And uh, thank you. You solved a couple of my problems today. So. Yeah, right. And I'll jump onto the events page and answer some questions that we didn't get to. I saw Excellent. The, you are a kind man. And, and Levi, thank you as well for joining us. And uh, Gerard, I just want folks to make sure that they check out. So if they go to Mosaic Archive, they can go ahead and download. You guys have a free version that is still beneficial to all photographers, right? Absolutely. Free version is your most recent 2000 Lightroom photos on your iPhone or iPad or also on the web uh, through a browser. So you can always have your most recent photos in your pocket. Think of it as your, your camera roll for your DSLR. Um, so that's absolutely free. So go off and, uh, and try it now. And, and just I want to say thank you to Turner and Terry who are on the Q&A sessions who are Mosaic customers. And so thank you very much. Uh, and I hope to meet both of you in person one of these days. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. We really appreciate uh, you guys jumping in on the Q&A and making this interactive this time. We're going to keep bringing this to you and we also have some new hangouts that are going to be coming. So be sure to head over to PhotoFocus, join our email list so you always have the latest information. And again guys, thanks so much for joining us.